Hey, Kevin, what are you playing with? Oh, last time I showed you how to do a little, uh, showed you how to do a lap joint. So this time I thought I'd show you how to do a butt joint. Go ahead, laugh, laugh, giggle, giggle, get it out of your system. Okay, come on over, let me show you what's going on. So just like the name implies, the butt joint is literally where you just butt two pieces of metal up against one another. Great for a lot of different thicknesses of metal, but you have to work the joint a little. You have to shape the joint depending on how thick or thin a piece of metal you're working. Here's a great little uh, chart that shows all the different joints. And you can also get this over on Wikipedia if you just type in uh, metal welding joints. And then this whole page will come up and you can look at it yourself. So all we're going to do with this little piece, this little piece of eighth inch, is just butt them up against one another. I'm going to clamp them to the bench. I'm going to tack them on either end. And then just run a little bead down there so you can, so you can see how it looks. So you've got the clamp right across the joint, huh? Oh, sure. Put the see with these with these can't twist clamps. You can see how it's got a top and a bottom. <laughs> excuse me, it's got a bottom and a top jaw, but one of them is bigger than the other. So you got a nice big flat surface to work with, or one with the cross hatches in it to line up a rod. And this one's just a little thinner, a little smaller in, in dimensions. So I'll put the thicker, uh, the thicker jaw on the top of the table so I can get across both of my joints in the metal, or get across both pieces of metal to hold the joint down flat. And then I'll just put the smaller one on the bottom of the table. What if you don't have a cant twist? Well, there's lots of different, jo lots of different clamps that you can use. Um, if you have to, you could just hold it down with your hand. You could weld it to the table. Not very hard. Just a little tack on the corner here and there just to hold everything still. Then you come back and just grind off your little tack welds, take your piece off. Uh, you could get a brick. You could get a, you know, there's all kinds of different ways. Use your imagination. You know, uh, th these are the tools I have. How can I make it do what I need it to do? You know, that, that's part of the fun about what I do, is making tools do something else than what they're supposed to do. Now you didn't look like you chamfered those. Well, uh, I didn't bother to chamfer these. This is just a this is a closed butt joint because the two pieces of metal are flat up against one another. It's only an eighth of an inch thick, so there really isn't much metal there to chamfer, and the welder's plenty strong enough where it can just go ahead and penetrate that eighth inch and just weld it all in one pass. But you can either do a closed joint, you can do an open joint. You know, just like that little chart showed. And depending on the thickness, if I was doing, if this was like quarter inch, then yeah, I would chamfer the edges a little and do an open butt joint where I've got a wide chamfer at the top, a small little narrow gap at the bottom, lay a nice bead down in there to be able to get all the way into that eighth inch. All depends on the thickness of your metal, whether you chamfer it, whether you U-shape it, whether you J-cut it, whether you, uh, you know, look at that chart. Gives you some good information. Got your helmet? What weld are you using today, Kev? Well, this is my little Lincoln uh, buzz box. Little tombstone welder, they call it. Just a little arc welder. This is a 6013 rod, 8 inch diameter. And we're running at uh, 120 amps. So you just tacked it, and now you can just yeah, use just one. Yeah, tack both ends just to keep it from spreading. And then I got a clamp just one and one spot just so I got a good ground. And I'll just go ahead and run a bead down through there. Okay, that's a little warm. <laughs> Now we'll turn it down to 105 amps.
let's chip the slag off, see how we did. Ooh, a little more practice there, Ted. <laughs> so you can see, see, this is where I started at 120 amps. And it started to burn through real quick. Started to just melt right through the eighth inch plate. So I stopped and I went back to 105 and started over here and just started running the bead down. This looks pretty good. And then it started to melt through again here because I've only got it clamped on one end. So as I was welding over here and the metal was heating, it was lifting up off the table. So instead of the table sucking some of the heat out of the weld, so I could make a decent weld here, now it's up in the air. All the heat is staying right in the middle. I'm welding, even at 105, it's too hot. It would just start to, it's gonna start to blow through. So 90 amps probably would have been better to do this piece with, but hey, that's how you learn. You play, you practice, you make mistakes, you start over. Let's look at the back. So you can see the discoloration in the back of the metal. This is from the uh, from the 120 amps where I first started. And then this is from the 105 where I made that nice long weld. But you can see how much heat discoloration there is. You can see how the weld was starting to come right through the back side of the metal. So full penetration all the way down through the metal coming out the other side. So should be a pretty good joint. So that's just a little butt joint there, just playing around a little. Wikipedia, great place to go to get information on stuff like this. Just type in metal welding and whatever you're looking for. Or just metal and welding. Lots of good information over there. Well, I'm going to go find something else to do. I'll see you next time.